Test, test, test. Welcome on in, Chatterbox Bearcats. Let me hit the record button. Let me hit the record button. Are we going to record? Yes. Welcome in, Chatterbox Bearcats. Let me find the camera. I'm just getting used to this. I'm getting used to it still. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how I do. We'll see how I do. Sorry for the setup. You got a door as my background. We got a door. I can't promise much more than the door, unfortunately, because uh, that is the current situation of this room. The room is a disaster area. Now I'm also I'm also going to be new to the uh, <laughs> to the technology front. All right. So if you're just tuning in, I am not Chuck. I am not Houdini. These are your your, your regular professional hosts. This is a Christmas break for them. Uh, they're they're partying it up, especially after a big win. I mean it's it's a big time win. I, <laughs> I I've had the I've had the discussion on off the bench for a while now. I don't know what the team is. I don't know if the team is going to be great. I don't know if the team is going to be bad. At this point, I still don't know. And there was a moment in that game where I was ready to cancel the show. I was ready to cancel the show. I didn't know what was going to happen. Look at these headphones, by the way. Look at these headphones. I was ready to cancel the show. This team eventually has to start playing in complete games. The second half's great. The second half's phenomenal. I'm very excited that the second half worked out for the Bearcats. But the first half was the very worst I've ever seen. The very worst. Uh, eventually in this show, you will see my friend Zach Freeze. I think, again, if the technology works, I presume I'm going to be able to do that successfully. If I'm not, uh, then I tried my best. Again, technology, it's like teaching a rooster, uh, how to paint. It's not going to go over well. I, I am, I have the brain capacity, uh, of a rooster and that, and that's just my fault. Chatterbox Bearcats, welcome in everybody. Listen, the Bearcats are going to be okay for now, but we are about to start one of the most brutal brutal stretches in UC basketball history. Seven teams in the top 30 we play. Back to 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 back. Did I miss a back? doesn't matter. We eventually have to start playing good. And, and, and right now we're not playing good. So we're going to run the intro. I'm going to run the intro real quick. And then we're going to get this thing going. And three, two... We're back. The hair is going to be an issue. I might get a hair. I might, I might get a headband. The hair. I listen. I, I try my best with the hair. The hair is too long. I grow too much of it. I have. I just have way too much hair. Uh, welcome in Chatterbox Bearcats again. What a time to be alive. What an absolutely great time to be alive. Uh, it was the worst first half performance I can remember in, in the history of UC basketball. Just absolutely brutal. UC was shooting about 38 percent, I think. 
Uh, and, and on the other side, Evansville, who was down their two best shooters, they were shooting a whopping 58%. 58%. It was, it was disgusting from the jump. Uh, I congratulate UC. I congratulate UC for not only winning but covering the spread. They won this game by 18 points. The spread was 17 and a half. Never a doubt. Never a doubt. Uh, but <laughs> eventually, I'm going to take these off. Eventually, this team's just going to have to play better. Uh, so we're going to do a little rundown here of the box score. John Newman, this is my guy. Uh, I, I've been searching for a leader of this team now for quite some time. I think John Newman's the leader. He's one of the strongest guys on the team. He knows how to drive. He's not a great shooter, but he's good enough. He's a, he's a, he's a damn good athlete. Uh, so John Newman had 16 points. Uh, he had two boards, three assists, uh, a couple of turnovers, but he did have a couple of blocks as well. Uh, Simus Lukosius. Lukosius, again, he hasn't been great. Now I'll give him a little bit of a pass because he was struck by that moving vehicle. God, bl- God bless him. I mean, just, just straight up God bless that guy. I don't know what he's had to endure, all the pain. Uh, but he's, he's been, he's been a light. He was a light tonight. Congratulations, Simus. You're back. You're all the way back, baby. He was five for eight from three point land, which is preposterous because that guy, uh, isn't a great three point shooter. He's, he's not. And in fact, I don't want him shooting threes, nor do I want half this Bearcat roster shooting threes. Uh, the lineup keeps shooting. There are 12 for 29, 41%, uh, from the floor tonight or from three point land, uh, tonight. Not great. I mean, just not great. 41% is pretty good, but again, they, they turned it on in the second half. Uh, Victor Locke in 11 points. Uh, he had one for two from uh, the line, nine rebounds, four assists, uh, and a turnover. Dan Skillings, 10 points, four for 12 from the field, five boards, three assists. Uh, Day Day Thomas, 10 points. He did finish with 10 points. He was struggling offensively for most of the night. He wasn't great, if I'm going to be honest with you. But defensively, especially in the second half, again, all these stats, you can just push them all to the second half because that's when this game really started. If I'm gonna be, I, I, that's just when it started. Uh, he had, I believe, six rebounds, seven assists, four steals, two blocks. That's filling up the stat sheet. Almost, you could say, a quintuple, a quintuple double? Quintuple double? Quintuple? Doesn't matter. Uh, Josh Reed, six points. He had a couple of three-pointers. Again, I don't know why he's shooting them, but he got two of them. Uh, Jameel Reynolds. Jameel Reynolds is a guy I'm going to have to talk about at some point, hopefully if Zach joins the program, because it seems like he's lacking – uh, at least, at least from the offensive side of the floor, he's he's lacking confidence. He's he was he was serviceable on the defensive end. Obviously, when, when we don't have Aziz, it's going to be tough down low to uh, stop anybody. But tonight, listen, he was he was serviceable enough. Uh, he had six, I believe, six boards uh, and a block. Jizzle James, four points again. Really a no show from Jizzle. I, I do think Jizzle is the most talented guy on this on this roster. I do. I firmly believe that. It's just he hasn't really shown it. And I don't, I don't know. I guess it's one of those things um, where it's you have to play the hot hand, and that hot hand right now is Day-Day. He's at least playing better all around. Uh, he's, again, not great offensively, but uh, better, certainly better than Jizzle. And, and Odia Guama didn't really play. He played five minutes, uh, a couple of boards. Other than that, uh, that's the rundown there. Evansville was down their two best players today, their two highest, highest scores. And that first half was absolutely abysmal. They kicked the Bearcats' ass. In every sense of the word, 40 to 32, they destroyed in the first half. They rolled us. Again, they were 17 and a half point underdogs coming into this game without their two best players. Up by eight at the half. There was a guy, uh, I I don't know his name. There was a guy shooting one-handed free throws for Evansville. One-handed free throws. It was perhaps the most preposterous thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't think you see, listen, I don't don't expect you see to, to beat every team by 30. But when you got a guy shooting one-handed free throws, you're going to have to be better. You're just going to have to be better. And, that, and that's unfortunately what the Bearcats weren't in that first half. Second half, they kicked it in gear. Only 18 points for Evansville after a 40-point first half. Uh, and then the Bearcats obviously answered with 44 in the second half, opposed to their 32 in the first. So overall, I'm not too mad, I guess, if, if that's the word you want to use. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not upset winning a game by 18 points. Evansville's a tough team. I, I was looking at this game early on, and, and Zach, Zach was, was, was really the one banging on the drum that Evansville's not bad. Evansville's not bad at all. I, if you go through our non-conference, and which has been bad, truly horrible, Evansville's going to be one of, the better, one of the better teams you see. And again, I'm not saying that's, that's a good thing. That's just how the, conference schedule, the non-conference schedule rolled out. So shout out to Evansville. Uh, they put up a fight. It was a valiant effort. The second half looked like UC against NKU. 
uh, two years ago. Just not great. Um, outside of that, listen, the defense in the first half, I don't know what the issue was exactly. It was the worst. It was the worst defensive half I've ever seen at Fifth Third Arena. The very worst. We had guys down low just getting bodied. It was like, I think it was um, Mo Egger said it on the broadcast. It was like they were all playing like they had four fouls on. You guys have to put a body on Evansville. You just have to put a body on. And at no point, at no point did they do that. At no point. In the first half. In the second half, it was completely different. Again, Wes Miller got under their skin. uh, And it was a better performance. But you look back at that first half, and you have to wonder what this team is. And it's on, I was going to get to it later. Again, Zach was at the game. Shout out to Zach. Uh, clearly, there was a miscommunication with how this podcast was going to be run. We go live immediately after. Uh, I believe Zach thought otherwise. Zach thought uh, we were <laughs> we were going to go like at 10 o'clock tonight. Well, you got to do it right after the game. Uh, I should probably do better looking at the chat too. Uh, again, this is my first time running all this by myself. So I'm a little stressed, but that's okay. We're going to have positive vibes here. We're, we're we're all gonna ha- we're gonna have positive vibes. Let me let me look at the chat right now. But what a game! What a game! Up next is a gauntlet, one of the hardest gauntlets I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, I don't know how UC is gonna do it. If I'm gonna be honest with you, you start up with BYU team, a team who beat Evansville by 40 earlier on this year. After that, you play Texas at home. Uh, that's Tuesday, January 9th. Then you play number 17, Baylor. That's on the road. After Baylor, you play TCU, a very tough team at home. Again, top 30 team in the country. Number 12, Oklahoma comes to town on January 20th. And then we travel to Fog Allen uh, on January 22nd. Just absolutely <laughs> brutal. <laughs> Just a brutal schedule after the most cake. And I get it why they did it. Again, when, when you when you play in the Big 12, it's a big boy conference. So eventually, uh, uh, you have to give your you have to give your fan base a couple of wins early on, and this was the wins. These were the wins: Evansville, Merrimack, Stetson. Uh, they looked terrible against all of them. UC did not look good against a lot of these teams. They they dominated Georgia Tech, who went on to beat I don't know three ranked opponents immediately after, beat them by thirty at home. That's a good win. You gotta you gotta take the wins where you can get them. And that's, that's, that's what, I guess that was the strategy here, scheduling 13 of the softest non-conference games of all time. Xavier, again, I, I'm not going to harp on Xavier too much <laughs> because uh, uh, Xavier kicked our ass and they'll always kick our ass, they own us. Um, but that was your best non-conference game by far, and it's a Xavier team that's not great. Quincy Oliveri is a stud. Uh, they got some guys on that team. Desmond Claude's pretty good. But this isn't a Xavier team that's a world-beating team. But again, in that game, UC just didn't show up for the first half. When you play a team like Kansas at Fog Allen, you're going to have to play both halves. You're going to have to show up. And they just straight up didn't show up. Just brutal. I, 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 I mean, just absolutely brutal. Stetson, Merrimack, all these teams, it's seemingly right after Xavier, I guess it rattled us. I, I, I don't know what that's about, but it, it's going to have to stop right now. I know you didn't have Aziz. We didn't have CJ Frederick. Both are going to miss some serious time. It looks like I don't know the I don't know the timetable for uh, CJ Frederick yet, but I know uh, Aziz has been not practicing. Obviously, he's going to be gone for a while. So you're going to have to get you have to make make do down low. And Victor Lockin's going to have to step up. I love Vic Lockin, but he's just one of those guys that again he, he can score. I, I compare him to a Kristaps Porzingis type. He's going to shoot a little bit too many threes. He's not going to drive a ton. He should be better down low and should be better defensively. He's just not. I think he's kind of, I'm not going to call him a soft big man, but he's one of the softer big men's uh, big men in college basketball, at least from my, from what I've seen. If you're looking, if you're looking for a, uh, if you're looking for a leader, if you're looking for a leader of the team, again, John Newman's my guy. John Newman is, is the toughest, the strongest. He's the baddest guy on this team. This is a guy I want down low going forward. I, again, center, uh, we don't have a center. With Aziz gone, there's just no center. And that's the way it's going to be. Victor Lockin is not a center. He cannot play tough down low. Can't do it. My bet, my best bet, again, Jamil Reynolds was okay. He's still kind of he's still kind of working into it. O- offensively, he's not there at all. I, I was watching the game and and he was he was not calling for balls. He was he was in the post. He was calling them, get it, pass it immediately out. He'd try to drive, didn't like it, kick it out. 
doesn't have the confidence right now. And that's fine. He's just starting. His season's just begun a couple weeks ago, or a week ago, I should say. So we're still going to find it. I, I don't know what UC is uh, completely. Again, we're going to find we're going to find it out along the way. But it's going to have to it's going to have to start happening because there was a point there was a point uh, right around halftime where I was questioning w- whether or not Wes Miller is the guy. And I don't want to sit here and say fire Wes Miller, fire Wes Miller. We're doing that enough with Satterfield. But at some point, the leash has to stop going out, right? When I walk my dog Juno out in the backyard and my leash is about 20 yards out and she's still not taking a shit, she's going to have to take a shit. You're going to have to drop a deuce and come back in. I'm not walking all the way out there. And, and, and right now, unfortunately for Wes Miller, uh, we're, at, we're about at the end of the line. This is, this is the end of the line for Wes Miller. You're going you're gonna to have to pull it together, guy. Um, you're about to play the hardest conference schedule and, and you see recent memory, past 10 years, it's going to get brutal fast. So we're going we're gonna to see what happens there. Uh, in the chat, we got Brian Flaherty. The defense scares me, Zebra. They can't defend me, you, and Marty. Thank you, Brian. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's Brian Flaherty. That's, a, that's, an elder, that's an elder staple. It appears my father is recruiting people to this chat. I believe that's what's happening right now. Uh, Mark, I am flying solo. PG-13, yeah, Reds Daily, I did say shit. My bad, hand up. Hand up. Uh, Ricky Logan, great analogy, thank you. Uh, that, that, was, that was an Elliott special. We'll see when Zach gets on. Again, I'm not going to say I'm mad at Zach for going to that game, but unfortunately for, <laughs> unfortunately for Zach, uh, the immediate post-game reaction, uh, it didn't connect. And maybe that was my bad for not explaining it. Um, <laughs> I'm trying my best. Evansville, 6 for 27, by the way, in the second half. And, and back to what Mr. Flaherty was saying, that's my guy. Uh, the defense does scare me. The defense for UC is atrocious. Uh, it, it just seems like none of them, none of them are, are, are tough enough to defend, especially down low. So whatever's, gonna, whatever's happening with that, it's going to need to be fixed. Day-Day Thomas, again, was great. Day-Day Thomas, again, the second half was great, uh, at least guarding the guards. Victor Locken is not great defensively. He's not good. He's not good. I, I, I've seen enough of Victor Locken to this point in his career where I can say that I don't trust him down low. I've seen enough of, at, at least thus far, I've seen enough of Dan Skillings to say, not a great defender right now. I've seen enough of Jamil Reynolds to say, not confident enough, especially down low. We're going to see where the team is. I'll say it 10 more times because what the hell are we? Ryan Rule, by the way, in the chat. Shout out Ryan. Ryan's listening in the chat. Uh, da, 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 da. who else is in here? Sean Connor, Sean Connor, who's not real, but I, I appreciate, I appreciate Sean Connor's. <laughs> I appreciate Sean Connor's words of wisdom as well. Con- concerned about that low post defense, uh, going forward. Yeah, I would, I would have to agree. It's, it's brutal. Uh, outside of that, uh, Lukosius again, drilled by a car. He's, he struggled up until tonight, came back, hit five threes. That's all I can ask from the guy. Shout out to him. Uh, outside of Lukosius, the three-point shooting wasn't spectacular, I would say. Uh, again, Day-Day Thomas was airballing threes, uh, which is brutal. Anytime I see one of these guys airball a three, it's like, you're wide open. Can you at least hit the rim? Backboard. Can you slam it against the backboard just one time for me? Uh, Victor Locken, 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. 1 for 4 skillings, 1 for 4 Day-Day, um, 1 for 3 Jizzle. 0 for 2, Odia Guam. And again, Odia Guam is shooting threes. Just doesn't compute in my mind. Uh, we got Zach. It looks like he is in a submarine of some sort. I don't know where the hell he is. Is he in a yeah. car? I don't know. I, I guess we're going to try to find out here. Yeah. It looks like he's frozen. So that's certainly not good. Let's see. Let me see if I can do this. Again, technology Elliot here. First night doing this, uh, the technology thing by myself. So we're just trying to figure it out. Let's see here. Let's see. Hold on. There he is. There he is. Zach, are you there? Are you there? No, it looks like Zach's... Service is bad. Yeah, that's not going to work. Zach, you might as well turn that off. That's terrible. I mean, that's just the worst I've ever heard. (laughs) Oh, what a disaster. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Listen, Bearcats played their hearts out. They tried their best. Uh, they won the game by 18. I'm not going to complain about it. Good luck against BYU. I mean, good luck. Good luck. 
Uh, I, I just don't, I don't see it right now, man. I don't see it. We'll, we'll, we'll move forward. Uh, good luck to the Bearcats going forward. Conference schedule's up next. That's all I can say. Uh, outside of that, again, Evansville. I don't know where, I, again, maybe I don't know the history of Evansville University enough, but I don't know. I think they're in Indiana. I don't know where the hell they are. And they were just absolutely dominating in the first half. Only three, only three made three pointers. They just took everything inside, and apparently our seven footers couldn't do anything. Six foot teners couldn't do anything. Up next, BYU, and we'll go from there. Outside of that, I think that's going to be the show. Uh, just because number one, I don't like talking into this void. I don't know how Charlie does this, by the way. This is a tough job here talking to myself. Uh, I guess, I guess that's 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 the, that's the game plan when when you host the show. But man, that's 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 brutal. You're talking by yourself here. Um, some guy named Toomey, by the way, Evansville. Is this the one-hand free throw shooter? I'm not entirely sure. 17 points. Killed us. Absolutely killed us. Uh, Strawbridge Jr. from Evansville. 14 points. Cuff, 13 points. Again, I don't know who these guys are. Some guy named Bob. Bob, shout out to Evansville. Just brutal. Just absolutely brutal. I think this is the uh, saying as as bad again as bad as it's been uh, the past several games. It started with Xavier uh, Bryant. We destroyed Bryant as you should. Um, but again, that was a bad first half game. Dayton in Cincinnati, which technically isn't a home game. The Bearcats finished ten and zero at home in non conference. That was technically not a home game, but again, Dayton rolled us. wasn't close at all. Merrimack. Didn't look great, again, in the first half. 27 points, I think 12 turnovers. Stetson looked atrocious. Stetson's ranked like 3,000 in Ken Palm. Looked terrible. They just haven't proven anything, and that's what I'm concerned about. You're about to play a big boy conference, and at no point during this season, at no point during the course of this season, have they looked like they compete in a, in a big boy conference. We're going to see going forward. Um but outside of that, let, let's see if Zach's even remotely close. Let's see if Zach's even remotely close. Zach says he's in a cave. Which player do you guys will see a decrease in minutes once the rotation uh, tightens up in conference play? Good question, Sean Connor. Uh, Brian Flair, they used to wear T-shirts with sleeves, and Chris Mack started a fight when he played there. LOL. <laughs> uh, who's up next for UC? It's BYU, and it'll be brutal. Uh, Derby stardom, I'm surprised the granny shot for free throws isn't more used. Rick Barry, the greatest free throw shooter in history, used it. I'm not. I'm certainly not going to try it. If you're going to go out there and shoot granny free throws, that's on you. <laughs> I mean, that one-handed free throw was absolutely pathetic. I guess his other hand hurt. That's the only thing I can think of. Because if you're, if, if you even consider yourself a decent, if you <laughs> consider yourself a decent basketball player, and you go up shooting with one hand, that's on you. Uh, okay, so back to Sean Connor's question. Shout out to Sean. I know he's fake, but I love you anyway, Sean. Which player do you guys think we'll see a decrease in minutes once the rotation tightens up? It's going to be Jizzle or Day Day for sure. One of those two, and especially once, um, uh, once if 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 CJ Frederick and Aziz are able to come back at some point, some at some point close, couple maybe maybe a couple weeks, uh, I assume no more minutes for Odie Aguama, just no more minutes. He has not contributed in any facet of the game. Respectfully, I say that with love and respect, but uh, just a disaster there. So, <laughs> Michael Ackley says Sean is Mo. I don't think so. I don't think so. Zach says F's in the chat for him. Uh, Zach is nowhere close. So this is going to be the end of the show here coming up soon. Thank you guys for tuning in. Again, I'm sorry I was by myself. Uh, I tried to do it. Uh, just wasn't going to work out tonight. But anyway, that's that's how the cookie crumbles. Uh, once the real hosts come back, this will be a more <laughs> done up show. I promise you that. Uh, I was trying to get the technology worked out. I actually didn't do bad. Oh, there's Zach again. <laughs> Just frozen in a car. Uh, other than that, thank you guys very much. Bearcats are back at it against BYU up next. Uh, Chuck and Houdini, come back and save the show. Come back and save the show.
God bless.